Today, we're here to talk to you about this, a portfolio of design proposals to reimagine New York City's social infrastructure. This is the story of how modest, creative actions taken today can catalyze dramatic transformation in the city tomorrow. It's about the New York City branch library systems, and it's based on the concept that a visionary idea in the right hands at the right time can change the course of our future. So where does the story begin? What if we took something as small as a library card and empowered it to act as part of a unified library system across all boroughs? The change would be symbolic, but also tangible, granting access to an abundance of public amenities throughout the city. But what if the library card could do more? If connected to other institutions, the library card becomes the link between services across the city, like a subway or a public pool. The convenience of this approach strengthens the library by bringing it into our daily routine. Blurring the boundaries of the library begins to happen more literally as well. With a budget of nearly zero dollars, the Librarian at Large program brings the guidance of New York's dedicated frontline staff into places where contact with the public is even greater and during hours when the libraries are closed. So a librarian might be stationed on a transit line serving his or her branch to connect with people who can only come before or after work, or set up at a neighborhood green market on the weekends. Of course, books already move beyond the walls of libraries by virtue of the floating collections enabled by Book Ops since 2013. As the program grows, libraries will leverage these trucks as a vis visibility platform, curating a series of murals that express the mobility of the system and spark curiosity. Like other temporary arts projects in the city, these rebranded book trucks become something to see and be seen with, taking on a life of their own on social media. But later, they'll fade into the background alongside taxi cabs and police cruisers as just another one of New York City's iconic vehicles. A new identity system for all of the city's branches crystallizes small-scale efforts, increasing the visibility of this unified system that operates at the scale of the city, the borough, and the neighborhood. The basic graphic, which is shown on the flag, conveys circulation, mobility, and most of all, librariness. The upward pointing arrows imply the potential for betterment that libraries provide. The activity in the graphic conveys movement and circulation. And also, there's a book in the middle of it. As the libraries reach more and more into the lives of the city, everyday people begin to reach back. Grassroots participation by regular citizens starts to have bigger and bigger effects. Not just more people using the libraries, but the libraries begin to be shaped and improved by their users. In places like Rego Park, a self-organizing group of volunteers would step forward to chip in with minor maintenance tasks on weekends. In this case, bricks are mended and seating repaired within days of the need being discovered. But it's not just the physical plant that benefits from outside attention. The library's information systems are also ripe for reconsideration. Groups like Code for America begin organizing fellowships and hackathons that bring hundreds of people together to create a new online interface for the library. Using part of a $1 million grant from Google, the library system builds open APIs that allow a profusion of homegrown library apps to be built without introducing the risk or clunkiness of an official redesign process. This experimentation leads to a stronger and easier to use main website, MYPL, allows users to discover not just artifacts, but networks. By simply and clearly linking resources across the city, this interface starts to become an important channel where citizens learn about the happenings of their neighborhoods through library workstations, home computers, and mobile devices, but also buildings, bus stops, and streets. Then, something interesting starts to happen. Cultural institutions begin to transform their own programs to engage the expanding library audience. And with these institutions comes their funding. In other words, the small investments the library made in enhancing its own visibility helped unlock larger pools of capital. Think of this as institutional leverage. For example, museums like MoMA begin to redirect their energy and resources, selecting the more socially and politically relevant site of a library roof structure as the focus of their annual Young Architects program that draws the attention of the best and brightest young designers in the country. With this new social focus for the program, MoMA and the library system together are further able to leverage private capital from companies eager to donate their building materials and construction time to be part of a high-profile project. 
After seeing MoMA de-risk the idea of pairing maintenance needs with innovative architecture, the city moves forward to launch a comprehensive radical maintenance program to address the library system's $800 million in state of good repair needs. Radical maintenance represents a bold change in the way spending on libraries happens, leveraging required repair costs to meaningfully transform the image and the experience of library buildings. The program begins with a focus on the so-called Lindsay boxes, designed and built in the late 1960s and early 1970s. These are typically small, single-story structures, which were built quickly as part of an ambitious campaign to expand the branch system throughout the outer boroughs. What was sacrificed in grandeur was made up for a number. There are over 65 of these modest structures across the city, and they expanded the reach of the library system to neighborhoods in need. These outdated buildings are in need of major infrastructural repairs with massive capital needs, which are essential in order to keep the doors open, yet invisible, and therefore fraught as the center point of a capital campaign. Branches are evaluated for inclusion in the radical maintenance program based on the scope of required upgrades. Those with the highest need are selected first. A catalog of simple interventions provides enough variety to meet diverse needs. All of the approaches fix invisible maintenance issues by using highly visible repair solutions. This addresses functional issues while enhancing the library's presence in its local community. So for example, a library like Hillcrest in Queens, which has $1.4 million in state of good repair needs, including a new roof, all new mechanical systems, and a comprehensive electrical upgrade, would already require considerable demolition of the ceiling, roof structure, and intervention in existing exterior walls. Through the radical maintenance program, Hillcrest is transformed to welcome the street and offer an iconic silhouette to the neighborhood but also transform the use and organization of the building by bringing daylight into an otherwise deep and dark space. Strategic insertions like these help the library get the most out of expenditures that are currently only used to maintain the status quo, moving from budget allocations that merely seal the roof to considered investments that make the roof an embodied symbol of what libraries offer. For example, at the McGoldrick branch, the roof becomes an occupiable public space for community gatherings. Or at the St. Albans branch, also in Queens, more light is brought deeper into the space by adding clear story windows behind a decorative screen. Or at the McKinley Park branch on 68th Street in Brooklyn, a blocky, impenetrable building is opened up to the street with a new facade. Or in East Flushing, a completely blank wall becomes an opportunity to create a strong connection to the street, showing what's happening inside. The Radical Maintenance Program is not only about restoring buildings to a state of good repair, but also taking the opportunity to consider forward-thinking resilience. The single-story Red Hook Library is one of many Lindsay boxes that sits in a flood zone. No matter how much repair is done there, rising tides will always be a threat. To address this, the library is elevated, and a new space is created below. Community activities that happen in this public space are captured in the mirrored underside of the building, while the new mirrored roof offered envir offers environmental benefits and also reflects the sky and extends the library presence beyond even the scale of the city. Radical maintenance projects directly improve physical infrastructure and resiliency, but they also activate their communities by advancing creativity, innovation, and curiosity. The very fact that these projects are happening becomes a chance for the city to change the way it talks to its residents about public works through new construction signs that are informative and engaging. This changes the way people relate to their local branch and provides more opportunities to learn from the process of rebuilding the city's social infrastructure. And that happens in more structured ways, too. Local universities get involved in the radical maintenance program by tying library-specific challenges into the curriculum. This works for vocational training as well by using the renovations of branch libraries as workforce development opportunities. The potential scale here is significant. When 65 or all 207 libraries are part of the Radical Maintenance Program, it won't just be the two young people on this billboard that are happy to be learning new jobs. Rebuilding local libraries will inevitably mean periods of closure. And this fact of life becomes a chance to think about the positive effects that can be manifest for a district. When a branch library goes offline for maintenance, critical civic resources and services that must not be interrupted migrate to nearby underutilized properties including commercial, mixed use, and public assembly spaces in the immediate vicinity. To contend with interruption, the singular edifice of the library 
temporarily dissolves into a network of smaller spaces with individualized programming. Meanwhile, there's one group of stakeholders that's increasingly absent in the library. <laughs> the affluent. When neighborhood branches enter the maintenance cycle, there's a possibility to turn some of these spaces into revenue generating assets for a limited time. These special events would strengthen recognition from civic leaders and potential donors. Everything we've shown today leads to this. The scale of the library's current needs are politically untenable when seen as pure costs. Union's portfolio has been designed as a series of incremental investments that build upon each other. The library's position as the linchpin of social infrastructure means that dollars spent on libraries translate into benefits across, across a wide variety of outcomes, from education to health, disaster resiliency. Investments in our libraries are not line items. They are tools that connect disparate but critical functions of the city. If the public library system is to thrive, libraries must move from the margins of civic life to its center. Let's view these costs as they really are, an investment in the future of New York City. Doing so means enacting this portfolio of strategies to help the city visualize the library's true importance. <laughs>